Rediscovering the Epistemology of Gabriel Marcel, a semester project in Classical Logic and Epistemology, The Foundations of Philosophical Thinking by Jeremy Stevens. Gabriel Marcel was born in Paris, France in 1889 and died in the same city in 1973. The death of his mother, World War I, and his conversion to Catholicism in 1929 were significant factors in his philosophy. Marcel's philosophical legacy includes lectures, journal entries, and dramatic works, in addition to the more orthodox philosophical expressions in essays and monographs. It is likely Marcel was most pleased with these dramatic works. You can recognize some frustration at the success of his philosophical works and the relative obscurity of his dramatic works in his autobiographical writings. Near the end of Marcel's life, the primary focus in epistemology were the works of the then contemporaries Soren Kierkegaard, Bertrand Russell, Ludwig Wittgenstein, Maurice Marleau Ponty. The release of Robert Gettier's article on justified true belief became the focal point for epistemology during the 1960s in the United States, while the work of Martin Heidegger dominated the European continent. Shortly after Gettier's 1963 article, Dr. Kenneth Gallagher, a professor of philosophy at Fordham University, published Philosophy of Knowledge. It's a text on the standard topics of epistemology covering Descartes through the contemporary philosophers of the time. In two of the later chapters, he discussed Marcel's epistemology. Dr. Teresa Tobin summarizes the introduction of Marcel in this topic in her 2010 article in International Philosophical Quarterly by staying, although Marcel does not develop an epistemology specific to the phenomenon of mystical experience, he does argue for two very different approaches to reality that correspond to two very different kinds of knowledge about reality. It is easy to understand why Marcel's work was not explored further in the field of epistemology at that time. Dr. Jill Graper Hernandez describes Marcel as a decidedly unsystematic thinker and comments on how difficult it is to categorize his work in large part because the Mar main Marcellian themes are so interconnected. Dr. Brendan Sweetman, president of the Gabriel Marcel Society, described it as not developed in any detail in Marcel's thought, but it is quite explicitly stated in general outline. Dr. Kenneth Bryson expounds by saying Marcel is often deliberately unsystematic, or at least not always clear on pivotal epistemological issues such as the nature of intentionality. Over the next few decades, as relativism became the mainstay dominating the European continent, people became aware that Pope St. John Paul II was a brilliant philosopher, not just a theologian and religious leader. It was during this time that Marcel's work was being digested and synthesized in light of the saint's philosophy on objective truth. In the meantime, relativism and skepticism grew in popularity through the works of Jacques Derrida. His theory of deconstruction led to the acceptance of the scientific view. But Marcel had already recognized this view as his primary reflection. This was the first of the approaches mentioned earlier by Dr. Tobin. This primary reflection is that of dealing with a problem to be solved through study. Dr. Sweetman expounds upon the differences in peasant farmers and tractors begun by Marcel. But the same comparison can be used with a sales tax accountant and an international tax expert. The sales tax expert will be well versed in the history of the quill ruling and the impact of physical presence nexus required before the Wayfair versus South Dakota ruling in 2018. While this concept is not completely foreign to the tax practitioner specializing in the Tax Reform Act of 2017 in the U.S., the related Base Erosion Profits Acts as well, they are as different as two Englishmen speaking French and German. Both could learn the trade of the other through sustained study, for a problem requires a solution which is available 
to everybody. But no amount of book study or classroom study could help either of the two accountants understand the deeper mysteries of fidelity, faith, hope, and love. As M.J. Cosgriff put it, primary reflection for Marcel cannot attain what he calls being and mystery, since it enumerates the facts of existence into disparate data, disregarding their metaphysical underpinnings. This second reflection requires the examiner to consider their place in the experience, their being. It is this understanding of the objective truths grounded in our own being that have led to a resurgence of attention paid to Marcel's metaphysics and epistemology occurring over the recent years. Most notably is the work done by Dr. Sweetman, especially in The Vision of Gabriel Marcel, Epistemology, Human Person, the Transcendent. In Sweetman's works, we can see Marcel's criticism of Descartes' approach to epistemology. Dr. Catherine Rose Hanley elaborates on Sweetman's work as she states, Professor Sweetman contrasts Gabriel Marcel's description of the nature of the human person as knower and the human process of knowing, which do not have the unnecessary limitations that flowed from Descartes' epistemology. Sweetman also shows how Marcel's clarification of the nature of the human person and the process of human knowing provide the basis and allow for greater scope and reliability in human knowing. Dr. Hanley further described Sweetman's work by talking about how he shows Gabriel Marcel's philosophical clarification of that nature of human knowledge. The human person and the transcendent can invite, even enable philosophers, to move beyond the distinct limitations that have been Descartes' legacy to modern and postmodern philosophy. Moving into the modern technological era, Levi Chekets examines the way facial recognition technology affects our perception and knowledge of moral action in the social realm. Considering Marcel's approach of experiencing an other as person, Chekets describes how the use of te this technology for a barista to engage me in conversation based upon information obtained electronically can feel like a violation. He states, a forceful appropriation of who I am without first having encountered me in being. The technology ultimately reduces the other to an object as I cannot discover them wholly. In the related domain of artificial intelligence, Dr. Gregory Wheeler discusses the relationship of analytical epistemology. A later discussion on the dangers of AI limited to that analytical knowledge from Dr. Nick Bostrom raises concerns about malicious machines that would likely have instrumental reasons to pursue open-ended resource acquisition. He goes on, if we now reflect that human beings consist of useful resources, such as conveniently located atoms, and that we depend on many more local resources, we can see that the outcome could easily be one in which humanity quickly becomes extinct, as he relates that to malicious machines and their superintelligence. It's interesting that this is the current topic covered in Season 2 of Star Trek Discovery from CBS. It's much like the movie The Matrix, as entertainment continues to explore deep philosophical topics. In the writings of Marcel, and the scholastic study begun by Dr. Gallagher, and continuing on through Dr. Sweetman's work, there is still much to be realized about mystery and being and how that applies to our modern era.